In my studio are many cables, and yet one cable you will not find is one running from my Stream Deck to my MacBook Pro. And that is because I went through so many different rabbit holes looking for a wireless solution because in my $25,000 YouTube studio, I've got so many cables going on already, I just don't want the smoke, y'all. So I spent the $84.86 it took for me to wire up this guy to a Raspberry Pi that is housed actually within the mounting bracket of this Stream Deck, as you can see. And now I can command all of my cameras. I can do my lower third. I can even uh, toggle my teleprompter feed, um, as well as some other commands, uh, all from the convenience of directly in front of the camera. Now, for $84.86, is it truly worth it? You'll have to answer that for yourself. I know for me, I've already spent the money. I'm already here. Like... I've got everything else going on, so it's like, why not? Now, I will have to say, um, you do have to be connected to an, uh, a, a router, so wirelessly or connected uh, through Ethernet on your computer, and then through the Raspberry Pi, this has to be connected to your internet. So as long as you have that, everything else is golden. Let me go ahead and start walking you through the steps. But before I do that, in order to actually house it within this mounting bracket, you're going to need some very specific pieces that I will leave as affiliate links in the description of this video. All right, just to give you an indication of how things are actually housed, I've got my stream deck and if I pull its guts out, you can see that I've got my Raspberry Pi right here, and it's being connected to the Stream Deck with a USB-C to micro USB right angle cable. Now it's very crucial that these are right angle cables, which is why I suggest you follow the uh, Amazon links, simply because if you want it to actually fit into the back here, then it has to be right angle USB. Now for this USB-C cable, it's also right angle on one side, but what I can do is I can plug it into my power bank over here, or even like a power hub, which is what I'll probably end up doing long term, just to keep it running for you know an extra five hours or so. Now this 1200 milliamp hour battery, it'll keep it going for a good three hours. But you know if you're doing uh, more longer gigs or longer workflows, then you will need to either connect it through to another power bank or even just connect it to another power hub. Now, I know what you're saying, but Daniel, you said it was wireless. Listen, the information is wireless, okay? The information, the power has to be wired in somehow. All right, so in terms of assembly, it really is pretty straightforward. You've got your pie sugar, you've got your raspberry pie, and then you marry them just like this. And you take these little screws and you screw them in into each individual corner. Now, one mistake that I made when trying to come up with the setup was I got the wrong Raspberry Pi and I got this little guy who has these GPIO pins already soldered onto it, if you can see right there. Um, yeah, so uh, whenever I tried to marry the two, it didn't make full contact. So make sure that you get a Raspberry Pi with no GPIO pins on it and you'll be good to go. And if you got them based on the uh, Amazon affiliate links in my comments, then you should be good to go. So go ahead and marry the two. And then we do need to program this micro SD card. So what you'll need is like one of those micro SD card readers to be able to insert this to your computer. And so we're going to program this and then reinsert it back into our Raspberry Pi whenever it's ready. Okay, so first things first, we need to go over to raspberrypi.com slash software and go ahead and download the Raspberry Pi imager. I'll have the link in the description and you can download from Mac or Windows depending on your setup. All right, so we're going to find our imager and open her up. So our device is the Raspberry Pi 02W. We're going to choose an operating system here. 
Let me choose Raspberry Pi OS Other, and then Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32-bit. Choose the storage, and we're going to click Next. Now we do want to edit the set settings, so we're going to go in here. Now I'm going to name it Stream Deck. Um, you give it your own username and password. So I'm going to give it my usual password. And then here we definitely need to configure the wireless LAN. So if you don't have that information, go and grab it. Look at your router, figure out the password and the name. Once you've got it, you can go ahead and plug that info in. And then we're going to click over to services here. And we're going to select use password authentication. So after you've done that, you can click save. Go ahead and would you like to apply OS customization, uh, customization settings? Click yes. Blah, blah, blah. Will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. Okay, so now it's formatting. And after it is done, what we're going to go ahead and do is plug in your micro USB into the Pi and then power it on. All right, so here we've got a Raspberry Pi as well as my micro SD card. So let me go ahead and pop this bad boy out and into the Raspberry Pi. So this UPS hat, it has two power buttons one closest to these little four LED lights. We're going to press it twice um, and on the second time you just hold it and it will power up. Now you can see that uh, this green light is flashing. That means that it is booting up the system. So it's going to take a little bit. We're going to give it about five minutes and then we're going to check back in and uh, see what IP address our router has assigned to it. But before we get there, let's go ahead and plug in the Raspberry Pi with our Stream Deck. So what I'll do is I got my little uh, USB-C to micro USB right angle cable. I'm going to plug it in to this micro USB. Let's see if it'll focus. Come on now. Yeah, so it's got to be this one. This one's for power. This one is for information. So I'm going to plug it in there. And then that'll be good to go. And then we are going to plug in to the Stream Deck. Let's keep it about do up. Okay, so now the name of the game is we're going to have to find out the IP address of your router itself. So if you're on Mac, you're going to go to Wi-Fi. You're going to look for your router. And then we're going to click on Details. And here at the bottom where it says Router, that 192.168.1.1, that is the IP address of my router. So I'm going to go to my browser and plug in whatever that number is into the browser and hit enter. Okay, now this is kind of like the network map for my router. Yours may look a little bit different, but I digress. You will be able to find the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. So here in mine, I click on clients. And then where it says Stream Deck, it says 192.168.1.102 is the IP address of my Stream Deck. So I need to remember that. I'm going to write it down. That way I can refer to it here in just a little bit. Now, before I start diving into the terminal and all the specific codes that we need to use, if for any reason you have any troubles, please do not comment with your question. Okay? Take it to Mr. ChatGBT because he is infinitely smarter than me. He can work with whatever specific setup you have and he will be able to give you a much more comprehensive answer and troubleshoot way, 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 way harder than I ever could based on a YouTube comment. So please, please, please save us both the trouble. If at all you need any help, ask ChatGPT. He's your boy. All right, now for the scary part. We do have to go into the terminal and do some hard coding. I've got everything written out for you. You can check the description, copy and paste. In fact, I very highly encourage you to copy and paste. Um, but we're just going to work through this one at a time, starting by opening our terminal and then typing in SSH. 
space, and then whatever that username was that you typed into the Raspberry Pi imager is what you are going to enter right now. So for me, it is Daniel Glass. No spaces. We're going to put the at symbol, and then we're going to type in whatever that IP address for your Stream Deck was. So for me, it was 192.168.1.102. And then we're going to hit enter. Okay, so now it's going to ask, are you sure you want to continue connecting? Type yes, hit enter. It's going to ask you for your password. So whatever that password was that you typed in on the Raspberry Pi imager, what you're going to type in now. And then hit enter. All right. Now, if you see that little green line where it says Daniel Glass at Stream Deck, whatever you uh, set your username and then the name of your, your Raspberry Pi to, as long as that's in green, you should be good to go. And we can move forward. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to go back to virtualhere.com and we're going to go to um, here uh, next to where it says USB servers, click down and then click where it says Linux USB server. It'll take you to this web page. You're going to scroll a little bit down to where you see, or see this option where it says virtual here, USB server for Linux with ARM in parentheses. So we're going to control click that and then we're going to copy link address. So with that link address copied, copied we are going back and we're going to type WGET space, and then we're going to paste that link in there and hit enter. So that is going to download that link, whatever file uh, would, would have been downloaded, is now downloaded onto your Raspberry Pi. And we're going to start by, let me pull up my dock, and there are these two commands, again, please go to the description so that you can copy and paste. These two lines of command right here, I'm going to copy it. I'm heading back over and I'm going to paste it in and hit enter. Okay, whenever I get my next green line, I'm good to go. And then what we're going to do, let me go find it again, is we are going to copy the next line where it says sudo nano slash etc slash rc.local and hit enter and it's going to take you into this new page where we're going to copy a whole line of code so again in the description please go copy it we're going to paste it in and then I'm going to hit control X and then hit Y and then hit enter. All right, so that takes us back to the original page where we are going to finish up by hitting these two lines. And then we're going to hit this line And then finally, we're going to do sudo space reboot and hit enter. All right, now that is going to essentially reboot your Raspberry Pi. And what we've done is we've downloaded the virtual here software onto the Raspberry Pi and then set it so that every time your Raspberry Pi turns on, it is going to boot up the virtual here software. All right, already. So we got one final step. I know you can almost taste it, can't you? But we're gonna have to go back to virtualhere.com and click on where it says client at the top. And then if you're Windows, download it for Windows. If you're Mac OS, download it for Mac. And then after you've downloaded it, you should be able to go on over to where it's in the applications, virtual here universal, you know, open that up and this little window will populate. And here where it says Stream Deck Mark II, 
I'm going to click on that. And it's activated my Stream Deck. All right, so as you can see, uh, my Stream Deck is working. I can go ahead and try out some of my buttons and switch between camera angles. It's working just fine. Now I can put it back into the housing just with these two components. Uh, you do kind of have to finagle it just a little bit, but you know, it's, uh, it's easily doable. Now, if you wanted to, say, run a power cable to your pie sugar, you would need to do it through a USB-C right angle cable. It doesn't matter if the other side is right angle or not, because it's not getting plugged into, you know, it's not getting fit into the housing. But you would plug it in right there. And then you can go ahead and do what you got to do to make sure that this whole setup gets fit into the back of your stream deck. And let's see if it's, yeah, like I said, it's just like a little bit finicky. Um, but once you figure it out, it's pretty simple. Let me see if that'll do it. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And there you have it, man. You've got your wireless stream deck. I can always wire it up. And now that'll go for hours. Assuming you were able to listen very closely and follow the exact steps I laid out for you, you should have yourself a wireless stream deck. Congratulations, I'm so proud of you. But if you weren't able to, and if you got lost somewhere along the way, it's probably because your mother-in-law was right about you. You're a miserable failure, and everything you touch burns to the ground. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.